We have studied about for loop and while loop. In this lesson, we will study about some loop control statements. These statements can interrupt the normal execution of the loop, either for loop or the while loop. So let's see what are these statements and how we can use these for the better logic development. I am writing a simple for loop. You can see it will simply print the loop variable i which will have values from 0 to 4 and then outside the loop there is a print statement as thanks message. The first loop control statement we will study is known as continue. I am writing a condition that when loop variable i is equal to 2, execute this statement continue. Let's run the code and see the effect of this continue statement. See carefully that after 0 and 1, we don't see 2 on the output and then we have 3 and 4 and then finally the thanks message. When loop variable i was having the value 2, we were running this statement continue. When a continue statement is executed inside a loop, either that is a for loop or a while loop, it will skip the remaining part of the loop block for that particular iteration and it will continue to the next iteration of the loop. The block of this for loop is from line number 2 to line number 4. On third iteration of this for loop, when i was 2, the continue statement was executed. There is only one statement after the continue, which is on line number 4, printing the value of the loop variable i, so that will be skipped and interpreter will move to line number 1 for the next iteration of the for loop. In next iteration i will be 3, the if statement will be false and print statement on line number 4 will get executed displaying the value 3 on the output and so on for the next iteration. So the continue statement just skips the remaining part of that particular iteration of the loop. If you still have any confusion on the execution of this code, please run this code in step by step mode and you will see the exact sequence. Now let's see what can be the practical use of this continue statement. For that we will consider this program which we created in the last lesson. This program finds the roots of the quadratic equation. The while loop on line number 4 is to rerun the program after the roots of one equation have been displayed on the screen. Then this loop was there to make sure that the value of variable a is non-zero. If the user will keep on entering the value of a as zero, this loop will keep iterating until some non-zero value is entered for the variable a. If instead of while loop over here, I can make it an if statement and then inside the block of this if statement, I can write a continue statement. This continue statement will affect the while loop on line number 4. See carefully what would happen over here. If the value of a on line number 5 is entered as 0 by the user, the if statement on line number 6 will be true and then the continue statement of the if block will skip the remaining block of the while loop which is on line number 4 and will move to the next iteration of the while loop. The next iteration will start from line number 5 of course and there we are taking the value of a from the user. If that is entered as 0 again, the if condition will be true again. And again the continue statement will skip the remaining part of the while loop and will move to the next iteration of the while loop starting from line number 5. So we do not need this line number 8 as well. Let's run the code. I am entering the value of a as 0 and you can see the message is displayed and the program is asking for the value of a again which is basically the line number 5. If I enter 0 again, it will again start the next iteration of the while loop. Now I will enter some non-zero value of a. So this time the continuous statement will not get executed and the next statement which is taking the value of b from the user will get executed and followed by the other statements. Now the next statement we will study is known as the break statement. So instead of continue, I will write a break over here. Let's run the code. You can see that after 0 and 1, thanks message is displayed. So you can easily see that in the third iteration of the for loop, when i was 2, the break statement got executed and the effect is that not only it will skip the remaining part of that iteration, but it will also skip all remaining iterations of the loop. In simple words, you can say that it will end the loop and interpreter will come out of the loop. Now let's see the practical use of this statement. Here I will write a code to find a number is a prime or not. For that I will declare a variable check equal to true. Then I will start a for loop. To find if a number is a prime or not, we have to see if it has any factor from 2 to the number minus 1. We have discussed in detail previously that if there exists no factor till the square root of a number, there won't be any after that. 
So instead of checking the factors from 2 to number minus 1, we can check those from 2 to the square root of that number. This is the condition if the loop variable i is the factor of num. If that is so, we will change the value of check variable to false and then outside the for loop, we can test if the value of check variable is true. It means that there was no factor found during the for loop iterations. So we can declare that the number is a prime number. And else means check variable is false, which means that there was at least one factor found during the iterations of the for loop. So we will declare that it is not a prime number. Now see carefully this range function. It will generate the values from 2 to square root of that number. So if the enter number is 100, the values generated would be from 2 to 10. And when we see this condition, if this condition is true on any iteration of the for loop, it actually means the num is not a prime number. So we should not go for the next iterations of the for loop. And here we can use a break statement. Let's see the step by step execution of this code. I'm entering the value 100. Check variable will get the value true. Now interpreter is on the for loop statement. Loop variable i will get the first value which is true. 2 is a factor of 100 so this condition is true. Check will become false and we know there is no need to check for the other factors. And hence this break statement will skip the remaining iterations of the for loop and will come out of that. Check is false and it will display that 100 is not a prime number. Let's run it one more time. Now I am entering the value 25. I will get the first value which is 2. 2 is not a factor of 25. This condition is false and it means that I should check for the next factors. And there will be the next iteration of the for loop. I will get the next value which is 3. The condition is false. So this will continue like that. And now when i has the value 5, the condition is true. Check will get the value false. And then outside the loop we will get the correct message. Now let's talk about the infinite while loop. We know there can be a possibility that the condition of the while loop never gets false and that while loop will continue forever. So I'm writing a while loop over here and as condition if I write a true, what does that mean? It actually means the condition is always true. So this while loop is an infinite while loop. So if I'm writing a simple print statement inside this while loop and if I run this code, this will keep displaying hello forever. But we know that we can use a break statement and that can terminate the execution of the while loop. So maybe on some condition, I can have a break statement and that will end the while loop. Instead of true, I can have one as the condition. This approach is quite useful in many cases. Instead of specifying some condition with the while loop, we can have an infinite while loop and then within the block of the while loop, we can terminate the while loop using some condition. I will demonstrate its use in a program where I want to take marks of different subjects from the user and I have to display the average of those marks. I am taking the marks in variable m I have a sum variable initialized to 0, then I will add these marks into sum variable. Now it's not for one subject, I have to do it for multiple subjects. User should enter as many subjects as he wants and he will enter minus 1 to indicate that he is done with entering the marks. These are the two statements which are taking the input from the user and adding that value into the sum variable. So I can make these two statements as the block of an infinite while loop. Inside the while loop after taking the value from the user, I can apply an if statement if that is equal to minus 1. It means that user wants to end the process, so I can use a break statement to terminate the while loop iterations. This statement is after the break statement, so that minus 1 entered by the user, which is not the marks of any subject, will not be added into the sum variable. And that's what we need here. To find the average, I need to know how many subjects have been entered by the user, so I can declare a count variable. I can use the count variable with the input display message as well.
and I will increment the count variable by 1 in each iteration of the while loop. Now again these two statements are after the break statement so when user will be entering minus 1 these two statements will not get executed and that is what we need here. Outside the while loop let's print the values of the sum and the count variable. I will enter 80 for the first subject, 80 for the second subject and now I will enter minus 1 to end the process and you can see the sum is 160 and the count is 2. The last entered value minus 1 will not affect the sum and the count variable. You can evaluate sum divided by count to find the average of the marks. You can do it yourself. Now let's reconsider this program where we are finding the roots of the quadratic equation and let's use the approach of infinite while loop over here. Instead of this condition that user has entered y for the next execution of this program, I can have a 1 over there and then inside the block of the while loop, I will use the break statement to terminate this while loop based on the value entered by the user. Now I do not need this line number 3 statement which was previously there to make the while loop condition true for the first iteration. But now the condition is true always so we can remove this statement. Now at the end of the while loop block, after displaying the roots of the equation on line number 18 and 19, we are asking the user if he wants to rerun the code or not, he should enter y to rerun the code. So I can have a condition over here that he has not entered lower or the upper y, then apply the break statement to terminate the while loop. Now if I will enter y, the condition for the break statement is false and there will be the next iteration of the while loop. Now I am entering the uppercase y, again the condition of the break statement is false and there will be the next iteration of the while loop. That continue statement for ensuring the non-zero value of variable a is also working here. And this time if I don't want the next execution of this code, I can enter anything other than y and you can see the code is ended meaning the while loop is terminated. One important thing you need to remember both for the continue and the break statement is that they will affect the loop of which they are part of. For example, over here I am writing a nested for loop. I am just printing the loop variables i and j and now if I have a break statement over here, This break statement is inside the block of the inner for loop so when it will get executed it will terminate the inner for loop only. It will have no effect on the outer for loop. Let's run the code. You can see over here the value of i is 0 which is the first iteration of the outer for loop and the value of j is 0, 1, 2 and 3. When the j got the value 3, the inner loop terminated but then you can see there is next iteration of the outer for loop and the loop variable i is getting the next value which is 1. And so on until the outer loop variable i will get the last value which is 4 and the inner for loop is having the value 0, 1, 2 and 3. So that break statement only terminated the inner for loop. Similarly, if I have a continuous statement over here, obviously this continuous statement is the part of the outer for loop and has no connection with the inner for loop. So what it means is, when i will have the value 2, the inner for loop will not get executed. Let's see that over here. See the value of the loop variable i, after 1 it is getting the value 3 and that is because of the continuous statement which executed when i was true. Now we will move to the next statement and it is an else statement associated with a loop. This might sound strange because we know else is associated with if statement but else can be associated with a loop. In most of other programming languages we don't have an else statement associated with a loop. Let's first see it's working. I'm writing a simple for loop displaying the loop variable. Now let's add a break statement on the condition when i is equal to 2. Now I am outside the for loop and I can have an else block over here. Let's just write one print statement over here just to see if the else block is executed or not. Let's run the code. 
you can see 0 1 on the output because when i was 2 the break statement terminated the iterations of the for loop and also we do not see the print statement of the else block now let me change the condition of the break statement and this time I am saying when i is equal to 20 then apply the break statement. We know i will never be 20 in this for loop which means the break statement will not get executed. So let's run the code. We can see the value of variable i from 0 to 4 and we can also see the output of the else block. So this time else block is executed. Let me just remove the break statement completely from this for loop. Let's run the code. And again you can see the else block is executed. So I hope you can figure out that this else block is associated with the break statement of the loop. When break statement gets executed in the loop, the else block will not get executed. And if the break statement does not get executed, either because it's not over there or because its condition is false, then the else block will get executed. So you can say that this else will get executed when there is no break executed in the loop. Now let's see the practical use of this else associated with the loop. Here we have a program to find if a number is prime or not. Inside the for loop, when a factor is found for that number, we were making the check variable equal to false and then we had a break statement to terminate the for loop. What I can do over here is that when a factor is found, we know it is decided that a number is not a prime number. So I can print that message right over here. And now outside the for loop, I can have an else block. Now see carefully what this else means. This else means that this break statement was not executed. The break statement is linked with the condition on line number 5. So the break statement is not executed means there was no factor found during the iterations of the for loop. And what it means is the number is a prime number. So we can display that the number is a prime number. Now we do not need this check variable. This code is compact as compared to what we had previously. Let's verify this for some numbers. 99 is not a prime number. 97 is a prime number, so it is working fine. Now we will see one last statement of this lesson. For that I have this simple for loop. Let's apply a break statement when i is equal to 2. You can see 0, 1 and then you can also see the thanks displayed which is the print statement of line number 5. So the break statement terminates the loop and the interpreter moves out of the loop. Now instead of the break statement, if I use this function exit and because it is a function, I have to put those parentheses after that. Now let's run the code. And we just see 0 and 1 and we do not see the output of line number 5. So this function actually terminates the whole program. So the continuous statement terminates one iteration of the loop. The break statement terminates all remaining iterations of the loop. And the exit function will terminate the whole program. Actually this exit function is not something associated with the loops only. We can use this function anywhere. For example, if I am using it over here, the line number 1 will display the hello on the screen and then this line number 2 will terminate the whole program. So what it means is that nothing after the line number 2 will get executed. You can see the output of line number 1 only. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.